Good afternoon. It's Saturday, May 9th, 2020. Uh, I hope and pray you've had a chance to get out today. It's beautiful outside, a little on the cool side, but still a very lovely day. Uh, we hope and pray that the spring work will get done soon, so the planting will all be accomplished, and then we can look forward to some, some really timely rains to make sure the crop gets off to a very good start. I have just a few announcements for the day. Uh, first of all, a reminder that our services will be live streamed from First Lutheran tomorrow morning at 9.30. <clears throat> the services will also be recorded and will be posted on Facebook and YouTube later on Sunday afternoon. They also will be um, recorded for broadcast um, from Guttenberg um, on Thursday at 10 a.m. We have re had reports of the services not being broadcast or not being seen, and I've talked with them down there, and they are going to check and pay attention this coming week to make sure that everything is fine. I'm going to check any technical issues on our end so that if there are issues here and how the recordings are being done, that we can correct them. Uh, but we do want to get those services out. I would remind you that the services as recorded right now are going to be about 40 minutes long. Um, that's because we have uh, a limited or a, an amended service um, since we do not have congregations in either church at this time. So do keep that in mind. <clears throat> also, um, we are going to be having a trial run of council meetings on Monday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, we're going to do this to test out uh, the Zoom meeting abil ability of our council members. And then the goal is to, if we can get everybody online, to have uh, St. Paul's Council meeting on Tuesday night at 7 and First Lutherans on Thursday night at 7. It's working out really well with the confirmation class. My Tuesday morning text study um, has a very good experience with the Zoom meetings, as does the, the board for the Lutheran home. <clears throat> and so we're hoping we can have our council meetings this way and tend to the business of the congregations. We are still looking at opening up the churches very slowly. Our goal is Pentecost Sunday, May 31st, um, but we need to be prepared for the possibility that it may be farther into June before we can truly begin having public worship again. There are lots of issues to be decided, and, and uh, I certainly will be presenting some of those to the councils this week so I can get their input and with the input of the Synod and with other pastors as to how they intend to go about it. We hope to come up with a plan that will work for both congregations so that we can not only gather for worship, uh, but celebrate the supper as well, because that's a very important part of why we worship. Um, a reminder that the food site in McGregor that has been going on since the very beginning of the social distancing and uh, the pandemic will be concluding its ministry this coming Friday, May 15th. That will be the final day. Uh, they've done a tremendous job. The community has responded in a marvelous way. Um, lots of support, lots of donations, lots of help. Uh, I want to thank everybody involved in that. You have done a wonderful service to the community and been a blessing, um, not only to the community of McGregor, but to the whole area around where people are are being fed and also receiving the gift of God's love through uh, the caring of our congregation and community. <clears throat> I want to spend a few minutes this morning talking about how to listen to a sermon. Now you would think that you wouldn't have to learn how to listen to something, but the truth of the matter is we don't do a very good job of listening to sermons. Um, pastors are terrible because we're either thinking, well, I wouldn't have preached it that way, or thinking, well, I want to tuck that away for my next sermon. And so we don't pay a, a, a lot of attention to what the one who is preaching is saying. We have the same problem uh, as we read Scripture. The problem is not that Scripture is that complex to read. It's that we're so familiar with it, we're so comfortable with it, that we stop hearing what's actually being said, what's actually being written. We know the stories. We know the themes. We know pretty much what's going to come one week to the next, or we think we do. And so 
we don't give it as much attention as we could. You will get more out of a sermon if you come prepared to hear the sermon. And the first challenge is to have spent some time in the previous week praying that the Holy Spirit will open your heart and your mind to hear the gospel as proclaimed in the sermon on Sunday morning. Most of us don't think to do that, but it is a useful thing to do to ask the Spirit who is always present to guide our listening and our response, but also to clear our hearts and minds on unnecessary things that would get in the way. We all do that. We get distracted by a thought, and before we know it, we've missed a couple of minutes of the sermon, and we have to try and catch up as to where we are. So we ask that the Spirit would help us to be attentive to the sermon as it's being preached. We can worry about the other details later. Also during the week, it would be very helpful for you to be praying for your pastor as he or she prepares the sermon for that Sunday. As I've shared with you before, for most pastors, sermon pre preparation is a very important part of their week. And it does take a lot of time and effort and thought. We pray a great deal, we study a great deal, and we want to be able to preach a sermon that proclaims the Word of God, that gives people the assurance of their salvation, that comforts grieving hearts and challenges those who are perhaps a bit lax in their relationship with the Lord. And if you are praying for your pastor during the week, that will add to the gift of preaching that will strengthen them in ways that they themselves cannot do because they are only one person. They are subject to the same kinds of weaknesses as you are. And to know that others are praying for them as they prepare to preach is a strengthening and helps the pastor focus on the work to be done. It's also helpful if you have a chance to read the scripture passages for this coming Sunday. It's not that hard to find them anymore. You simply go online, if you can, and you type in the lectionary for Sunday, May 10th. And more than likely, you will find the revised common lectionary readings for that Sunday. It would be helpful to read those in advance so that the scriptures are already in your mind and in your heart. And so when they are read and proclaimed and preached on, it won't be the first time you've heard them. That in and of itself is an amazing gift. And of course, <clears throat> the greatest challenge is to listen, to hear what's being proclaimed. And listening is one of the more difficult things we do as human beings. <clears throat> I know we can all hear the sounds. Anybody can hear the sounds. But if I were to, after each service, sit everybody down and give them a sheet of paper and write, what did you hear in the sermon today? I would probably get as many different answers as there are people. Some of that will be because the sermon spoke to them differently. Some of it will be because they weren't listening very well. They may have been hearing the sermon, but they weren't listening to the sermon. And listening is something that you do have to practice. As I said earlier, you will be tempted to be distracted by all kinds of things, but you simply set them aside and you pay attention to the words as they are being proclaimed. You try to comprehend and understand those words as you're hearing them. If you hear something particularly meaningful and important, give thanks for that tuck it away in a corner of your mind so that you can come back to it and continue to hear the sermon. Let that be your focus for the 15 to 20 minutes that it takes for a sermon to be preached. A little bit of preparation, a lot of prayer, some reading of scripture, and supporting your pastor as he or she works on their sermon during the week 
will go a long way to helping you have a better experience and understanding of the word proclaimed in a Christian sermon. I know most of the pastors that I am familiar with, they want to proclaim God's word as faithfully and as carefully and as clearly as they possibly can. And I hope and pray that that will continue in God's church. And I also hope and pray that you can come prepared to hear the word, to hear it as faithfully and as clearly and as understandably as you can. And one final thing. If there is something that either you don't understand or you do understand and it confuses you or upsets you, the thing to do is to call the pastor and ask about it. Say, Pastor, I didn't understand what you were trying to say when you said X in your sermon yesterday. Or, Pastor, what you said in your sermon yesterday really upset me and here's why I think why. To enter into that conversation with your pastor about what you've heard, how you've been challenged, helps them not only clarify what they were trying to say, but helps them as they prepare for sermons in the future. So they be better understand how the congregation understands and hears the message, and so that they prepare a sermon that uses a language that resonates with you. Preaching the Word of God has been one of the joys of my life, and I hope and pray that my heart and my mind will last long enough that I can preach the Word as long as it pleases God to do. I hope and I pray that you can grow in your ability to hear and to bring the sermon into your heart so that it becomes more and more a part of who you are and you hear the good message of God's salvation. Let's take a moment for prayer. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, you work in us in all ways, and we pray that as we proclaim and hear your word, that you so open our hearts and our minds to that word, that you so make us attentive to that word, that it does a blessing in us each Sunday as we hear it. Guide and direct us as you challenge us to understand new things, console and comfort us with the words that are familiar and promising, and lead us all to become better servants of your word, through the word read and prayed and proclaimed. We thank you for hearing us pray today and ask that you will be with us tomorrow as we worship you. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Well, I hope you have a very good rest of the day. I look forward to seeing all of you again in church one of these days. But until then, let us continue to worship as God allows us to and as we are able. And I pray that tomorrow will be a blessing for all. Until then, God be with you. Goodbye now.